So I'm just waffling on. But yeah, next stage we're gonna make a shank. We're gonna make a shank. This won't be going in that shank just now, but we need to make the shank to get it to get it right. Milling out a piece of metal. Uh, get go steady. Uh, you don't want to lose too much height on the ends. I might I might squeeze it down one way just to get a bit more height. And then I'm going to do what I did in another video. I can't remember what I was making. But I thinned out a middle section. There's a mistake I always, always make. I always mill out too much distance. So the ring size always gets massive. Um, so I'm just going to try and mill that much. Like, keep it that far from the end. Just mill out about that much. And then the whole shank should be about that long with a thinner bit in the center. But first I'm gonna squeeze it one way so I get the height, and then I'm gonna start working in that little middle section. Um, I'm trying my best not to make a mistake and go too far. Wish me luck. I'm not gonna make that mistake. Don't roll it too far. Just squeeze it a little bit. Don't go too far. Oh, it's creeping length a little bit. A little bit more. Don't go too far. I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> Don't go too far. <laughs> okay. There we go. Kind of close to the end. I'm just going to make it a bit longer. There we go. <sighs> it was square, squeezed it this way, so I got a bit more height there. Uh, then I've squashed it down in the middle, just that section. Probably could have gone a bit wider. But um, I'm scared of going too far again, so I've got, I've got a nice bit of metal there, which will turn up nicely to my shank. Right, what I might do with this shank, um, I'm tempted to, it's really short, but I'm tempted to turn it up into a circle so it will look like a really small ring. But that way I can bang it against the ring stick with my hammer, get it perfectly round, the, insides, uh, the inside circumference perfectly round. And then also I can shape it up really symmetrically and really perfectly. And then I'll just cut it through the solder joint again and open it up to the size I need to, to fit that head. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Okay, that's gone really hard straight away. Problem with melt ups, everything goes really hard really quick. Right anyway, I'll anneal that and then continue, do what I said. Turn up into a circle, get it nice and flat, get it perfectly round, and then file it up, cut it through the solder join, open it up. Bob's your mother's brother. It's not always possible to use this, but sometimes if you've really got to force something around, uh, using your ring compressor can can be a bit of a, a cheaty kind of hacky way to to get things around. So that's alright now. I'll I'll cut it through a little bit, get a bit of a flat, so that solders up strongly, and then I'll put it on the ring stick and start bashing it about and filing it. Filed it up. Just tap in the shank up to a tapered point a little bit. Gives me an extra bit of height. Also, a bit of a design flare. Let me show you a close up. Let me show you a close up. Yeah, just basically a filed up a shank. And I know that looks tiny. Don't forget, I'm about to cut that open and open it right up. So this can go in there. But I'm gonna cut straight through my solder join, but I'm gonna chop it back a little bit because that, that inner inner join, either side of the join is a bit horrible. Um, but now I'm just gonna cut through the join and then make any adjustments I need to after. <laughs> If you 
you ever find yourself having to rejoin a shank and there's no head in there, I find just laying it down on a flat block, if you've got something that's nice and flat, helps you. Then all you've really got to think about is filing it nicely so that it closes up well. But uh, it's not going to be a perfect join, but try as best possible to get it straight. You don't want a shank like this, and then you're working on it, and then you've got to cut through it and straighten it up because it can make things look a bit twisted. So just try and get it really straight. So I try and solder it perfectly, and then I'll, I will tap it as well um, to make sure it's all lined up really well, as best you can. Your shank, make sure it's straight. Make sure your angles are nice and symmetrical and there with your head. Put it on, make sure you like them. I might straighten mine a little bit. Um, but yeah, make sure everything's working correctly. It's all nicely lined up. Uh, next, you're going to need, we're doing the under bezel, so we're joining that up, the bottom half. So we're not putting that head in. We needed it for the distance, uh, but now we're putting a piece in. So basically, you just need a plate. I recommend going the same or thinner than your thinnest parts on your head. And it's just got to be bigger, basically. It doesn't really matter what shape, as long as it's, you've got spare over the edge of your head. And then we'll cut it back when it's in there. So cut it to a sort of sensible -ish size. And then without uh, making sure this is dead straight, without changing its curvature or its angles, uh, get a piece in. Just annealed this bit of plate. A little bit hot. Obviously, uh, the curve of that has got to match the curve of that. So double check your size. I've got K and a half. I'm now going to bend that so it draws a perfect circle around that inner edge. And I will be basically just putting it in that tapping it round. I use these things. Cut it to a more sensible size or where it's going to need the minimum amount of uh, adjusting. So I'm just going to snap mine off there. It's going to curve so you're going to lose some length. So make sure, make sure you cut it with extra length with your swage block. Don't choose something that fills in the gap entirely because that has some depth to it. So there's no space for that. You won't, you'll just be kind of hitting it down, not, not right to the bottom. So you need one with a bit of space. Um, obviously, don't go straight to your smallest one and put a, sorry, excuse me, put something on top and hit it down because that sharp edge will damage it. Like things like that, I don't know why I mean, the amount of people that got rich off the jewellery trade, but no one ever gives nothing back to the trade. Like me, I'm constantly making notes about how I can improve tools. So one day I would like to bring out my own range of tools. And things like a swage block, there'll be a lot more choice. Like, there's two severe differences in these. And then also, I won't have sharp corners. I'll just round it off just gently. And it'll save so many people damaging their pieces accidentally. That sharp corner, just there's no need for it. Anyway, um... So get one where it fits in. Um, you can even start it off with pliers, I guess, will be sensible. So it's got a bit of a roundedness and drops in there more. And then tap it in. I've got a, oh, it's in the other room. I don't like banging my hammer against uh, steel things because uh, you damage it. I recently had to buff it back because I had loads of marks in there. Um, I've got like a heavy uh, ended nylon hammer, like very hard plastic hammer. And it's got a lot of weight to it. so. For hitting these sort of things down, I like using that. You might have a rawhide mallet. Um, rawhide mallets are rubbish, throw it in the bin. Uh, but you, ideally you need something uh, that isn't metal when you're banging metal against steel, other steel tools. Gave it a tweak with the pliers, so that drops in there now, no problem. And then my hammer, uh, it's heavy because it's got this kind of metal brace around the outside. But the weight really helps it a lot. And make sure your piece in there straight. If you've got something in there a bit diagonal, and then you tap it, it's going to be twisted. Uh, it's no good. Let's make sure it's in there straight. Let's see what size I got. Uh, oh, that's not pretty good. That's about right. Well, that's good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, start with a bigger one, work your way down if you need to. Now holding it directly in front of you with your curve going that way, make sure your end is really straight and then you're gonna to have to get the, the angle on it correct to sit really well against one side. And then once you've done that, then try and hold it on its side and then mark it with something and then cut it out. But that needs to, this can't be changed at all, this shank. That, that has to stay that, that circular, you can't move it about at all. So we're just adjusting this piece to make it fit. And ideally, it just drops. You fold it, all the correct angles on the ends, 
curvature is nice and it should just drop down and sit level. So what I've done, K and half, uh, I filed one end to get that to sit nicely. So what I do is I hold that, so it's touching one end and I'll just mark it so I know where to cut. And I'll always cut it, giving myself a bit of work to do with the file to get it back perfectly. Because you might saw it and make an accident with the, uh, with the angle or something. You don't want to waste this bit of metal and start again. So mark it where it needs to be, but then I always cut it slightly longer and it gives me a bit of a maneuverability room to maneuver <laughs> uh, to get it fit in perfect. Without the shank moving, that should just sit there and line up nicey nicey. It should solder in well and not affect that at all. Technically, I can just balance that in there. There you go. That just sits there quite quite sturdy because it's the ends are matching angles and obviously it's a bit of a flat, so it's quite sturdy in there. I'll just hold that in tweezers in my trusty old peg slot, solder it in. So as you can see, you put that piece in, I've uh, been papering it, just paper dist over it, making sure it's flat, uh, filed around the inside, buzzed it out, just to make sure everything's all lined up nicely and everything's all nice and straight, no, nothing twist. I'm gonna work on the shank a little bit, just get that nice and flat. Just ki kind of take it up to the next level before we put this on. Probably won't bother with this one but if you're doing a ring for a customer you'll get the shank perfect so what I do is I mark directly directly at the bottom like 90 degrees 270 degrees and in between and then with my digital calipers ideally the sort of bottom half maybe slightly less of the bottom half is all the same and then it starts going up more but because this head is so wide it might uh, reduce the amount that's the same and just have the tapered section coming down a bit further down the side but yeah basically that obviously that's got a mirror that a little bit different that side 182 194 so I know to take more weight off one side so it's not immediately obvious looking at it so to get measurements are the same I would put a very slight flat on there and then after your measurements are quite good you can sort of round it off but don't touch that middle section and then obviously by eye, all you can do really is just match. If there's a flat on the side, make sure that looks nice and symmetrical, nice and even all the way around. If you're doing one for a customer and you're finishing it off properly, properly, get this all polished out, get that all perfect, papered and polished on underneath before they go together. And then it's gonna really make the difference between your handmade high quality piece and a, a crappy CAD design 3D printed job. Right, so mine, uh, the points of those are going just on top of the shank, which is when I was talking about doing the V-claw, the V-claw would have been set into the shank, but I want to partly make it a bit easier for myself and easier also for someone doing it for the first time. We're just going to have a kind of slightly chunky round claw, which will be uh, set into the top of the shank. So it's much easier to do and it just changed the way I made it slightly rather than having it set in between the ends it's gonna go kind of on top which it looks all right it kind of suits it so um yeah if you're doing one in precious proper precious metal get it all polished out before you start joining bits together uh, a measurement that's really important for it to finish off looking nice is the height of the ends of your shank so i should probably should have mentioned this earlier but it doesn't matter it's now when it's really important uh what have we got Uh, that says 2.87 2.93 uh, 92 uh, Yeah, a little bit higher this side, so 
like not a lot at all, just do it with a buff stick. So yeah, tweak it and uh, make sure they're as accurate as possibly can get because that makes a big difference. If, if one side's tilting up more than the other, it's gonna really show up because once you put claws on the side, it really, the gaps really are really highlighted in between the claws and if one side's taller than the other, it just looks like you didn't make it very well. Uh, basically, you nearly made it well, but you didn't quite. So important things to get it finishing, looking really good from its side profile, is that angle is perfectly matched to that angle and um, yeah, the heights it sits at. So both of these got to be exactly the same. Both of his angles got to be the same. Claws have to be all perfectly symmetrical as well. Actually, it's getting quite tricky, isn't it? <laughs> I forgot about, I don't, I'm not thinking ahead with this job, but yeah, once the claws go on, it's gonna really highlight uh, any inaccuracies you've done. So, like I always say, just work accurately, take your time, get everything straight, uh, everything symmetrical, all your angles and stuff. It's all, it's all just being a jeweler, really, isn't it? Learning all that. Right, this stage. In silver, it causes problems. Like, if this was, if this was platinum, yeah, or even gold, I would have soldered that in hard gold hard solder and I just like hold it in that position and then solder it it'll be fine but if I had that clamped even gently if I heat that up silver just turns to butter it'll just squash it all out of shape so I'm gonna have to get a bit of wire or something and just put it in the middle so that sits on it so it just balances at, at the right height it's kind of supported nice and straight and then and then I'll carefully uh, touch a bit of solder on the ends that's the only way I can do that um, if you're working in gold and stuff, uh, I would. You know, I mean, you could do it the same, but I would uh, just clamp it in the middle. So I'm making a new handle for this knife. I need a thick bit of metal, which I don't have, so I was cutting up uh, like a sheet of copper. So I'm building the little hand guard there. Because um, I'm cutting that up, I had these little offcuts of copper. And yeah, check this out. This little bit, I just flattened the sides, took the burrs off, and it just sits perfectly. So. I'm just going to leave that in position. I'll flux it both ends and that almost acts like a bit of glue to hold it in position. And then I'll just touch, gently touch a little bit of solder on there. Hopefully it doesn't all fall apart when I try and heat it up. All right, take your time when this is, when you're putting this in position. It's got to be lined up like left and right, really perfect. So I'm looking at it from the side, making sure it's over the same amount, opposite sides. Needs to go back a little bit more this way. Oh, just a tiny little touch. Yeah, there you go. I like that. But then that's no good if it's like forwards and backwards wrong. Which it is. This is when my um, watchmaker's eyeglass comes in handy. Do you remember if you saw my video, I think it was on a Golden Nuggets video. Like a 10 times loop, it's so close. It's nice to be able to magnify it but in focus slightly back so you can see the whole thing it's got to go that way without moving left or right oh. <laughs> all righty no a bit more What I'm doing is I support like what one hand against the other hand and one hand against my peg just so there's no like no trembles of my hand. Oh come on. Do you know what? I think the whole thing's tilting this way, balls in me up a little bit. That's better. Okay. Alright. Okay, I'm sure that moved. Ah, oh, it did. Alright, <laughs> oh, that's good. I think it went up that way. Ah, it's alright, you know.
it's got to go this way a little bit. Man, I'm like maneuvering it like tenths of a mil. I think I've got it. Problem is I've got to get flux on that now without it moving. And then add solder without it moving. And then solder it without it moving. What I'll do is get one side, get them both lined up really perfect, but then get solder on one side. And then let it cool down. Look over it. You can tweak it a little bit if you need to. But basically take your time. Right, this side's really good. This side's nearly really good. So I'm going to solder this side up. And then I think I'm going to have to pull it across a little bit. Did that. It flooded. Oh yeah, I got it. Just double check it's in the correct position. Uh, not bad. That's really delicately on there. Ah oh, man, I'm good. Look at that before I, uh, before I touch it. You can see the point, just that little solder there. Very delicate little one. I soldered it on. This is fresh out of the acid, so it's just how, exactly how I've soldered it. Uh, just looking over it, make sure it's all straight, make sure my points go right down the centre and it's all in a nice straight line. Um, I'll look from the side, check your gaps. Uh, next, we've got a cut around that, and then we're filing it, filing them up together, like very, very perfectly. And my one, I think, uh, it's only just touching the tops of those shanks, shoulders. Look, mine's not going to be strong enough, so I might put a bit of metal through there and just just touch it on with a tiny bit of solder just to hold it nice and solid as I cut and file around it. Uh, things like that, jewelers on other channels definitely won't show you because um, it doesn't make you look good. But I think it's important to show you these kind of things. But this is how how I work, how I progress. Uh, I can do this because I don't, I don't sit here calling myself a master or claiming to be the best at any time. Um, I, ju I just get jobs done. So yeah, what I'm going to do to proceed just to make sure this doesn't bend out of position when I'm working on it cutting and filing around the top. I'm just gonna get a bit of metal that fits in there nicely and solder it top and bottom both sides and then get it all cut up and filed back. And then we can just chop it out. It should be relatively easy to do. All right, I have this bit of round wire. I just milled it to put a flat on it because it wasn't quite touching it. So now with that extra little bit of uh, width, it stands up in there, like just, just stands up in there. Actually, I might mill it a bit more. That's all right, I'll solder it in, just in the middle. Another design, another day. It could even be a bit of a design feature having a pip in the middle, but I don't want it on this ring. Um, so yeah, I'll just solder that in the middle. And right now what we're doing, we are cutting around it. Basically, I'll cut it reasonably close and then do the rest of the work with a file. Um, we're gonna file it, not vertically, it's gonna be under a little bit, so uh, you have to pay attention to that angle because you've got to try and keep that angle the same. You go around this corner, so the angle's got to be kind of the same. And then same with these, that angle following that curvature. And then also the trick is to file up to that, uh, but not take any distance away from it. Maybe just the tiniest amount. Um, this just goes back to what I've been saying the whole time about not taking too much metal away past the girdle, so I just went up to the girdle, so the stone, that bezel was just hidden behind the edge of the stone when you look directly down on it. So there's a tiny bit of uh, spare metal now. So we can file up to it without trying to take any metal away, and then technically we should have a little bit spare, little bit spare distance for like papering and polishing after. I would recommend, don't try, and try to be too clever and to cut that angle on it. Do it with your file, it'll be so much more accurate, much safer. Going into these bits, so I've cut around it basically, yeah, but now uh, next, got to cut a little bit out of there. What I do is I sort of line up with a corner, 
and I cut directly into it, so not too close to there, not too close to there, just sort of down the middle up to that point. Uh, I don't saw right up to it as well, I let my file do all the work. It's, you can do much more careful, accurate work with your needle files than you can um, sawing into it. Bear in mind how you're pushing it against your peg as well. You could push that out of shape quite easily, so you might have to hold it a bit awkward. And don't let your saw hit the bottom of your shank either. It's all getting a bit it's all getting a bit awkward to work on. Okay, that'll do. Do it about that much, all four, then I'll start. I probably won't, I can't even bother to cut a piece out. I may cut across there, but I can open that up very quickly and easily with a tri, tri square file. Take these corners off now, and then I'm approaching it being ready for putting claws on. My claws are gonna have the, the round one, like I said, I'm gonna do there. Uh, I'm gonna have two little ones sticking up there. They're not gonna go right down to the bottom. They're probably just gonna go from there up. And then four claws on the corners for the center stone. Sorry, I'm being dumbass. Uh, not putting the claws on next. I'm gonna cut out the back. So, you know, that back plate is still solid, so drilling out the middle, either side, cut some shapes out, get that kind of nice. If you do that, you might want to, you can use dividers to go around the edges, um, use a marker pen just to give you a guide. We can sketch out some designs. Uh, basically, my side ones are going to be quite small. Yeah, but basically just scaled down version of what that top looks like. So do that next, then put the claws on, simply because when the claws are on, uh, they get in the way when you're trying to use your saw blade. <laughs> 